I'm Riley Chow. I'm joined by Zach Laws, Tony Ruiz, and Luca Giliberti. And we're here to discuss the limited series and movie uh, program and acting races at the 71st Emmys that are coming up. So Escape at Danamora is the front runner in Gold Derby odds. Tony, would you say that that's because it's actually going to win or is it just kind of a placeholder because we've all seen it? I think right now, I think the theme for this season, particularly on the limited series side, is going to be all about the uh, what peaks at a particular moment. I think it, you know, last year around the time that the Emmys were airing, um, Sharp Objects, you know, was what everybody was talking about. That got upended at the Globes and SAGs with Escape at Danamora. Um, but there's still a number of prestige projects coming down the pike. Um, so I think this seems more like a, a, a race that involves certain ones sprinting into the front at a certain point, but it's going to be about which one has the most staying power. Um, I think it's too early to I think right now Escape at Danamora it just has the momentum, but I don't think it's a momentum that will necessarily stick. I think we have to see how it stacks up against some of these other uh, shows that are coming down the pike. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, part of the reason why Escape of Danamora is ranked so high right now is because there's still a number of prestige projects that we still need to see. Um, I, I mean, first and foremost, Fosse Verdon uh, from FX, which has had really good luck in this category in the past few years with the Ryan Murphy shows. Um, we've also got um, When They See Us from Ava DuVernay and Netflix, which is dropping like the last day of Emmy eligibility. So they're certainly trying to uh, create buzz at the exact right moment. Uh, and also Catch-22 from Hulu, which has a all-star cast and is from, uh, you know, obviously it's based on a, a beloved novel and um, it's from a network that has been, you know, thanks to The Handmaid's Tale, asserted itself uh, in the uh, Emmy race, also with The Looming Tower last year. So, you know, there are things out there that could steal the thunder from Escape at Danamora, uh, which I think that uh, that has largely benefited from Patricia Arquette's buzz. Yeah, I think Danamora is more of a placeholder right now just because it performed so well at the precursors and because Patricia Arquette won all those awards. Last year in July, August, I really thought Sharp Objects was going to be the front runner and I thought it was going to perform really well at the Globes and at Critics' Choice and at SAG, but then it didn't. So I just think um, it's that default uh, front runner. But I do think, as Zach said, we really have to see what these other projects or how these other projects do because we have a lot. I think we also have Chernobyl premiering next month. And then when, you, that when they see us, I just think it's so early. All these limited series are premiering late this year. So I think there's a lot to be seen. And I think where we have to look is the nominations count because if Escape of Denimora overperforms with the acting branch, if it gets in two supporting actors and maybe um, both then Benicio Del Toro and Arquette in lead, then that's a sign that they like the show. But I think we really have to wait come for the nominations to really see what's the front runner. Yeah, for me, I'd say I wasn't predicting Amy Adams over uh, Patricia Arquette because of the performances per se. It was more just, I thought a lot of people had seen Sharp Objects like Big Little Lies and that buzz would kind of carry it forward. Whereas I didn't really think anybody had seen Escape of Danamora. Yeah. I think it turns out that the industry actually has. But I have those two in my top two uh, positions for the nominations because I don't see how either of them misses. Um, but yeah, I'd be surprised if either of them won. I'm actually betting right now on Chernobyl to win just because that trailer looks insane. Yeah. Could be a big hit. But overall with this field, I'd say I thought it seemed really competitive um, a few months ago. And then as more of these shows come out and I catch up on the older shows, then I kind of think, eh, this field's OK. Uh, one show that I really didn't respond to was Fosse Verdon. So the press has five episodes of them and uh, of the eight. And Tony, I know that you had a very different response. You love the show. I think it's, I think that it's actually uh, the best thing that Michelle Williams has ever done. Mm -hmm. um, I think the trick, I think the thing about, about Fosse Verdon is it, you come at it from a specific place, depending on how well you know 
uh, these iconic uh, artists. You know, if you go into it knowing a lot about Bob Fosse and a lot about Gwen Verdon, um, then the the there's a certain amount of just absolute joy that comes from watching these two together, and that also digs in in really I think really interesting ways under the skin of who these people were. Um, and what I find really kind of shocking is that I I kind of thought because Bob Fosse so much overshadowed to a certain extent Gwen Verdon in life. What's really interesting about the show to me is that it really does seem that as much as Fosse is kind of front and center, there is a really great emphasis on Gwen Verdon, uh, highlighting things about her that even I, as a as a fan of Gwen Verdon, didn't know. Um, and of course, we haven't seen you know the the thing the one the episodes that they've released are not completely like finished. They're not completely like the visual effects aren't in, and some of the music cues aren't in there. Did you catch yeah. microphones and cameras popping up all over the place, and then music that you've heard before? That was yeah, a oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. And so I, I take that with a grain of salt. They're still uh, editing them, so I just re really focusing on the story that they're telling and and how they're telling it. Um, that I think just works. The question I think is is you know there there's there's two schools of thought here. You know, this is a, about the entertainment industry. This is uh, about two icons. Um, and if people go into it as fans of theirs, are they going to look at it the same way as maybe people who aren't as familiar with it? So I think that could be interesting to look at. What you're saying is really interesting, Tony, about how, uh, how you, the, the kind of knowledge that you have about Bob Fosse and Gwen Verdon before you go into it could affect your enjoyment of it in the same way that maybe um, it worked against something like Feud, Betty and yeah. Joan, if you didn't have like an affinity for, um, uh, everybody's names are escaping me these days. <laughs> Joan Crawford and Betty Joan, Davis. Joan Crawford and Betty Davis. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, you know, I mean, as a lifelong Bob Fosse, Gwen Verdon fan, I'm certainly uh, standing to see this, um, but I think that, um, you know, it could be one of those things where it translates into acting wins for Michelle Williams and Sam Rockwell. But, you know, whether or not it translates into a series win is really going to depend on whether or not it, you know, becomes a part of the zeitgeist. Mm. Well, and, the one thing, like. and, I, and one thing I'll say about that is, is I think the one thing that held off Big Little, or uh, that held off Feud from winning was the juggernaut that was Big Little Lies. Mm -hmm. um, if, but since we have a much more divided field of nominees, you know, of very prestigious projects, there's, there doesn't seem to yet be one that everybody is coalescing around. Um, so I think that there's still opportunities for multiple projects to get in, depending on what uh, voters seem to respond to. And I think that's the difference with the, with this year is because the last two years, at least, or the last three years, actually, with American Crime Story and Big Little Lies, we've really had these fan favorites, these shows, as you said, that impacted the zeitgeist, and we just don't have that this year. I thought Sharp, Ab Sharp Objects was going to be that show, but that was a very tough sit. And I just recently rewatched the pilot, and I loved the show. So, um, But when you rewatch the pilot, you realize that it's really dark and it's a really tough sit. There are scenes that are very slow, and I just don't think it, it'll be everyone's cup of tea. So I think that's a problem with that show. I, I think a bigger problem with Feud was not that Big Little Lies was in the way. It was that people thought it was kind of been there, done that with kind of biopics and they wanted something more zeitgeisty. Uh, but I think it'll all come down to timing and campaigns. Like last year yeah. with Patrick Melrose and The Alienist and uh, what, what else we have in there? Let's see, Genius. Uh, Genius. Those ones were not really shows that got the best reception and the industry didn't necessarily even like them that much seeing as they got very little response from the guilds later in the year but they hit right when uh emmy emmy voters were watching screeners and they're being bombarded with billboards and all other kinds of advertising that i think it was enough to get them the nominations so we'll see where the spending is, I think, in the next couple months. And I mean, FX certainly has money 
to spend. So, I mean, I, I would predict Fosse Verdon to get in just for that reason alone. I mean, um, you know, if, if they had the money to spend before they were acquired by Disney, oh boy, watch out. <laughs> yeah. You know, you mentioned Chernobyl and uh, I kind of wonder if when that comes out, uh, that's from HBO as well. Yeah, um, yes. I wonder if that could steal some of, if that is a big success, um, if they put, more of their campaign might behind that instead of sharp objects just because they also have true detective I'm that's not right sure. yeah i mean i didn't like true De i didn't like season three i don't know if any it kind of came and went i don't oh, feel well. like it had a lot of buzz but i'm curious to see how it performs because it does have mahershala ali who's you know just coming off of a second oscar win so i'm curious to see how that performs and what how hbo um campaigns it I think he certainly got a shot at like an acting nomination, yeah, definitely. whether or not the show gets in. Mm -hmm. I figure that he wins, so I have it in my series predictions, kind of just Thank working you. backwards. But yeah, it doesn't really seem like anybody cared about it. No. We haven't mentioned a very English scandal yet, which um, is uh, the most lighthearted of this <laughs> bunch. Um, uh, I, I certainly have Hugh Grant and Ben Wishaw getting in for mm -hmm. acting bids, and certainly somebody like Stephen Fears could get in for directing, but um, I don't know whether or not that translates to a series win. If it could get like crowded out just um, from some more seemingly important projects, but you know, it is like when you look at all these very serious and dark uh, uh, shows that have been on uh, and in, are, are in competition, it does kind of feel like a breath of fresh air when you watch it. So I could see voters going for that. Uh, certainly it was pretty popular when it came out. Yeah, I wonder if it's just too light because at the guilds, yeah. it only got a single nomination you know, for Hugh Grant across all 16 of the guilds. Um, so I'm wondering, and it does feel like people kind of saw that one and enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm not sure why there was that disconnect, but that's holding me back from putting it into my predictions when it seems like it should be a very obvious contender. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel like I had a lot of buzz. Maybe I just didn't hear the buzz, but I, again, it's like a show that sort of came and went. I think it did well at the Globes, but it is a very Globes type of show. So that didn't really surprise me. And I do think Hugh Grant and Ben Wishaw are definitely getting in. Maybe one of them wins, we don't know. We'll see how the race, um, what happens. But I also don't have the show getting in. I just don't feel like it fits into this category. But who knows? Now, uh, we mentioned Netflix with When They See. Um, is, is When They See Us. Thing. Um, uh, is Haunting on of Hill House, is that limited? Or is that that's it's limited? limited. So, it yeah. is limited, yeah. yeah. I mean, that and was I'm, a big uh, popular success. Really, really good. good. Are the Emmys as thirsty for you know popular entertainment and their nominees as the Oscars are? Could that benefit from that? It, it, no, but it, it, the problem is I think it, it has a couple of things working against it. I think it could do well in some of the craft and some of the tech categories. Mm. Um, I don't know that it might necessarily get into any like acting nods outside of possibly Carlo Gugino, mm. um, um, but. But boy, what I mean, that show was talk. You want to talk about a show that was in the zeitgeist for a while? That certainly was. Um, but then again, you have such a crowded field and it aired so long ago, it might be uh, forgotten in the in the problem is we have so many shows coming out right at this time. Exactly. I, Something else that pretty much came and went from Netflix Maniac with Emma Stone and Jonah Hill, directed by Carrie Fukunaga, which is bananas that nobody was talking about <laughs> like well i think many i don't know how many people actually liked many i think emma yeah. stone is the best thing about that about that show and i'm really hoping hill house makes it in somewhere it was my favorite show of last year and i think if one person gets in or if it gets one nomination it needs to be mike flanagan for directing all 10 episodes especially that sixth episode which mm -hmm. a lot of people were talking about. Stephen King mentioned it, Matt Bomer mentioned it. There were a lot of people out there talking about it, but I fear that the show's content or the show's storyline may be working against it. I don't know if the Emmys are ready to embrace that, even though they've embraced Game of Thrones and Stranger Things and Westworld on the drama side. But 
I don't know, it, has, it didn't land with the guilds like I hoped it would. It didn't get into SAG Ensemble, even though the ensemble is huge and it's Netflix. So I fear it'll underperform. I think Netflix just didn't know what they had with that show at all because they submitted it as a drama uh, inexplicably across the guilds. And from what I hear, they didn't really campaign it. Yeah. So there could be a difference um, like last year where Godless didn't really do that well with the guilds and then Netflix put you know, tons of money into it for the Emmys and it did very well there. So I, I'm ready for it to be embraced uh, along with uh, American Vandal, but I don't that'll happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's right. another uh, Patricia Arquette limited series going on yes. Hulu, The Act, which I believe she is going to be campaigning and supporting for that to keep herself out of competition with herself. Um, yes. Do we think that that has a shot of getting into something besides her? Or are they? I have seen all eight episodes, and she is actually supporting. If you watch the first mm -hmm. couple, it's yeah. pretty even between her and Joey King. But by the finale, she's only in five minutes of it. In the seventh episode, she's in five seconds of it. So her role is reduced as the show goes on. It's an excellent performance yes. from her. But I think that, like The Haunting of Hill House, it's, um, it's, it's too tough a sell. This is, um, it's, it's a true story. So I found it hard to watch just because this woman's not horrific. evil in a fun way. It's mm -hmm. horrific. It's horrific. And I do think the show is popular, and I think a lot of people know about this real life story, and I do think that could help it. But I don't know what Hulu is going to do with it, first of all. And there are a lot of people, it's very small in scope, even though the story is very big. It's, you know, most of the time it's just in this house. And I don't know if the Emmys are going to embrace it. And there's, there are a lot of people talking about it being very soapy. So I don't know if that's an Emmys type of show. I think the performances have a very good chance of getting in. I hope Joey King gets in because she's a real scene, scene stealer, but I don't know. What about uh, what about Dirty John? Could that be like the center from this year? <laughs> speaking yeah, of, yeah, speaking it, of it'll Sophie. get the same nominations, just a uh, lead actress. Yeah. <laughs> Anything to get Connie Burton an Emmy. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I guess I have her in right now, an actress who. Um, yeah, just, I'll, I'll throw. Oh, yeah, sorry. I just love yeah. the title of that, Dirty John. I know. Um, <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll throw out a couple more contenders. Uh, Catch yeah. 22, I think, is going to bomb sure. just based on Me the too. first episode that I've seen. Uh, I think George Clooney will get in just because he is also a director of some episodes. He's executive producer. I think people will appreciate that he is working behind the scenes as well as in front of the camera. Uh, also, the first episode begins with him yelling for three minutes and dancing while he's doing it. So I think if people just watch the first three minutes, then he's an easy name check nomination. Uh, one that I'm actually predicting to get into the series race and lead actress and some below the line is The Hot Zone on uh, National Geographic, which is kind of their version of Chernobyl with an outbreak and uh, history and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I just figured that National Geographic did such a great job of campaigning the last couple of years, including for Genius uh, last year, which had a panned season, that I figure if this is their May miniseries and it's starring Juliana Margulies and it's high octane, then it'll be an easy sell for Academy voters. Then, that's interesting because I hadn't even heard of it until now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I, I was like, what's I'll... the hot zone? <laughs> that's the uh, Juliana Margulies thing, right? That's yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. no, I never. Know. We'll see. And also, never and never count out anything that's titled Les Miserables. Oh yes, we do have uh, that with uh, Oscar winner um, Olivia, Olivia Coleman, who's campaigning and supporting for that. So. All right, let's touch uh, on movie. So at the oh, that category, Awards, that category still exists? <laughs> yeah. Normally, there are only like 25 movies on the ballot. Uh, this year, HBO could fill the entire category on its own with uh, mediocre movies that they've either produced or acquired. Uh, I think we generally assume that Black Mirror will win again just because that's what tends to happen in this category. The award actually goes to series instead of movies. Uh, I don't actually. I don't, I, don't assume, I don't know. Even I don't even have Black Mirror getting in. 
Really? I have a good internet, but I don't have it winning, so I don't assume that. Yeah, so Zach, do you have Deadwood? Uh, I do, and sort of for the same reason that uh, you touched upon with uh, their voting for Black Mirror. Um, I think they would be voting more for Deadwood the series. Um, now, that's contingent on it being good, um, but maybe that doesn't really matter <laughs> with, uh, with how this category has been in the last few years. But I think that there's probably enough people who remember and revere the original Deadwood series that, you know, it could end up getting nominated across the board in a lot of different categories, like for Ian McShane, um, for writing, for David Milch, maybe for directing, certainly for some creative arts uh, categories because of all that period detail. Um, I think that if it's good, it could very easily win um, mm -hmm. as just like a way of, hey, we, we kind of missed the boat on this series when it was actually on. So this is our way of making up for that. All right, let's let's indulge Tony. Uh, why is Black Mirror not getting nominated? I just don't. I, did anybody really like this particular Black Mirror? No. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, and I think in a year where um, there actually are you know far more uh, <laughs> potential nominees uh, that actually have some you know, real cachet. I don't know that they're just going to check off Black Mirror again, um, particularly for an episode that wasn't that well received. At least, you know, San Junipero, Callister, those were like really well received, really critically acclaimed episodes. But this one, maybe not so much. Maybe that clears the road for something else to get in. I think you could miss writing after oh. winning the last oh, yeah. couple of years. But I think it's just too big at this point to miss. I agree. A stupid category like movie. But. Well, it's going to have to be like, we're, we're going to have to have some really good TV movies, which looking at our prediction center right now, you know, we, yeah. we have two episodes of the Romanovs in here. And uh, Brexit. <laughs> yeah. Out of, I, I do we even crack 10 here? I, it looks like we got a little bit more than 10 contenders. So um, it's going to have to be a really, <laughs> it's going to have to be a really weak uh, TV movie category. Uh, I, you know, I mean, Fahrenheit 451 got nominated last year, for God's sake. So, almost um, one. Yeah, <laughs> and almost uh, one. Oh God. <laughs> so I think that uh, you know I'm, they're not, they're not above uh, just putting it in there from name recognition alone, much in the same way that they, you know, may probably put Deadwood in there for name recognition. Um, I would like to see Brexit win. Uh, Tony, what are the five that you have, and why do you have them? Uh, the ones I have right now are are Deadwood, uh, King Lear, the Amazon King Lear with uh, Anthony Hopkins, um, Brexit, um, and then uh, the Jeffrey Wright movie o uh, OG oh. that actually was really really powerful, um, um, and um, and then Native Son, which is the uh, uh, modern day adaptation of the Richard Wright uh, book. Um, to me, a lot of those have a little bit more possible cachet than 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 um, I think. The, probably the one that could be like the weakest one of those is probably I'd say probably OG. But Native Son has some has some real star power behind it, yeah. so that'll be really interesting to see how that rolls out. And there's also the Peter Dinklage uh, TV movie, right? I the, I'm oh yeah, my dinner there, Ray. Yeah. yeah. I don't have, I think it's in the Gold Derby top five. I think I have Native Son getting in instead because Tony, as you said, it has some big names attached and I, it was not that well received, but that really doesn't matter with this category. And um, I think with HBO campaigning it, if they campaign it correctly, I think it can get in. Yeah. See, but, I actually have my dinner with Herbie because of the name attached, which is Peter yeah, Dinklage. Yeah. I think he's a bigger star than Ashton Sanders, but That's true. Uh, Native Son does have a better release date and it might be campaign heavier. So yeah, like you said, Riley, this could basically be the category of HBO, which um, it, it generally is anyway, aside from the rare Black Mirror episode. But um, yeah, not, uh, not an embarrassment of riches um, as we've seen <laughs> over and over again. Oops. They also have Icebox, uh, which actually got very good reviews, but is probably the least seen of any of their contenders. 
Yeah, I guess All with right. a lot of these, I'm just looking at who's possible acting contenders and if that would matter at all. But... All right, well, tell us about some of the acting contenders, Zach. Uh, how about <laughs> in the actor? <laughs> what do you have there? Uh, I have Sam Rockwell. I have Mahershala Ali. I have Hugh Grant, Ian McShane, Benicio Del Toro, and Anthony Hopkins. I should probably switch somebody up for Benedict Cumberbatch, but I'm not sure who yet. Um, but uh, yeah, and also Peter Dinklage, uh, oh, consider putting him in there as well, since he's you know already going to be picking up one Emmy for Game of Thrones this year. Um, yeah, I currently have Mahershala Ali winning just because the it's a very baity role. I mean, he plays the character i think throughout three or four different timelines he has all this makeup on in when he's playing the older version of himself and he has some big scenes and he has the oscar so oscar buzz but there might be some mahershala ali fatigue and i think that could pave the way for someone else to win i just don't know who it would be yeah. it could be sam rockwell it could be hugh grant i don't know if benicio del toro can actually win because I don't know if that's like a winning type of performance because it's not a big showy performance. I think a lot of his acting happens in his face and I don't know how Emmy voters will respond to that. But if the show overperforms, we could see him win too. Well, I mean, that subtlety could hurt him in the same way it hurt somebody like Patrick Wilson and Fargo, exactly. you know, which overperformed in its second season, all except for him. So. I would like to bet against Mahershala Ali just because I think there's no passion for a true detective. But I don't know where yeah. to go. Exactly. I don't have Del Toro in. Um, uh, I have Rockwell, McShane, Anthony Hopkins, Mahershala Ali, Hugh Grant, and Peter Dinklage. Um, and I've got Rockwell out front right now. I do really? Too. I do yeah. too, yeah. See, see, may... see, that surprises me with you actually having seen it. <laughs> no, I... I... <laughs> I, I think if he wins it, he captures Bob Fosse so beautifully. And we would, we, you know, if you want to talk about big performance, I mean, dancer, womanizer, drug addict, alcoholic, mm -hmm. you know, nervous breakdown, psychotic breakdown. Um, you know, it, 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 it practically screams, you know, give me an Emmy. Um, and, but again, I, am like a student of Bob Fosse. So, I mean, he captures him so brilliantly that, and he's kind of on a, on a, you know, he's still in kind of that honeymoon period of like, you know, his Oscar was just a year ago and there's, and he immediately got nominated for a much smaller performance in vice. Um, so he could still be in that honeymoon period that could, uh, without a clear favorite in that category, in this category, I think he could be the one that people coalesce around. Mm -hmm. I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, very possible. For me, it just seemed like he's another riff on the Don Draper type that we've seen you know, ad nauseum in the age of um, peak TV. I, I mean, I suppose he was first, he was ahead of Don Draper, but it's just kind of the same way that the Twilight Zone, uh, even if it came before Black Mirror, now the new Twilight Zone just kind of feels like a knockoff of Black Mirror. And that's also a contender that we did not mention uh, yeah. A little bit because we don't know exactly where it's going to go, probably in limited series, but possibly in TV movie. So Would anybody I'm, predict uh, the Twilight Zone for either or for limited series if it's eligible? No. I mean, you know, uh, possibly. Like Jordan Peele is pretty hot stuff right now. Um, he's got like the number one movie in the country at the moment, and. Um, you know, it, it might just get on off of A, his name recognition alone, and B, the name recognition of the Twilight Zone itself. So, um, you know, I would be interested to see how that, you know, performs overall when uh, it's finally out and people have especially, to all of it. Especially, especially, oh, especially. Well, I'm so out of it. <laughs> it has 61 on Metacritic. Yeah. yeah. It would be. It would certainly be a boon for CBS All Access, but although slightly irritating if that gets in before the good fight gets anything. Yeah. And the lead actor, one person I still wanted to mention is someone who should have been nominated last year in supporting actor in the limited series category, which is Cody Fern. He's probably not going to get in, 
but I do think he, you know, we talked about big performances. He gives a very big performance, a very over the top performance in American Horror Story. I just think it's worth mentioning that he's in the lead actor lineup and he should have been nominated last year. Mm. He should have won last year. Yes. For lead actress, Tony, do you think that uh, Michelle Williams can snatch the award from Patricia Arquette or is Patricia Arquette just going to continue her steamrolling? I, I have Patricia Arquette right now. Um, again, I think a lot of it's going to depend on what the larger reaction uh, to Fosse Verdon is going to be. Um, I, but I do think that this becomes kind of a, a two-way race between those. I think I, I think if we've learned anything at this point is that they're not going to give it to Amy Adams, um, wow. which is unfortunate, which is really, really unfortunate, I think. Um, yeah. But um, right now, I think I, I, barring a some overwhelming response to Fosse Verdon, I think I think Arquette's going to ride this one all the way. Well, either one of two things could happen. This could be one of those years where, um, you know, an actress has a trajectory of winning the Globe, SAG, and finally the Emmy, or it could be one of those years where someone starts their trajectory of winning the Emmy followed by the Globe and SAG, which would be the scenario by which Michelle Williams could go on some kind of a hot streak. Um, I do have her beating Patricia Arquette right now just to keep things interesting. Um, I, you know, She's a woman who's been around for quite some time um, and has never really won a major industry award that I know of. Um, and certainly people- Get the Globe for My Week with Marilyn? Yeah, she oh, got a, she got she got the globe for that, but she she's never nobody counts my week with Marilyn. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that hysterical comedy in my week with Marilyn. Yeah, okay, so well, a, a major award that anybody can remember. Um, okay. But certainly uh, not a peer group vote, a peer exactly. vote award. She's right. Yeah. Um, so I think that there is some residual goodwill to give her something in the same way that I think everyone figured it would be for Amy Adams, but uh, it depends on how well Fosse Verdon is received. I do think it's between those two. Amy Adams is at number three. Poor her. Um, aside from that, I guess the category could be filled out with, um, I think Emma Stone will probably get in, even though Maniac is not going to perform well across the board. I think they're just going to put her in there um, because she's Emma Stone. Um, Connie Britton, I have getting in for Dirty John. And uh, I guess I'll throw in Helen Mirren for Catherine the Great. And, uh, yeah, I've got round her. I've got her. I've got Helen Mirren. Round out my six. So. I, okay, I, with Catherine the Great, if it's actually eligible, I think that's going to be huge. And I'll put it you know, across the board in my predictions. I just don't think it's going to air in time. That's oh, why okay. I, don't, I haven't mm. mentioned it. And, yeah. I hope it does, because I don't know who else I'm going to put in there. Maybe Joey King or Joey Juliana King. Margulies. The Hot Zone. I, yeah, the Sarah Hot I, I, I really hope Emmy voters embrace Joey, uh, Joey King, because she's just as good as Arquette on the show, and she's really a revelation, because I don't think anyone knew she could act, or at least act like that, and she really has some, it's a very tough role, and it's very, it's very difficult, and she has so many different sides that she has to portray of that character, and I think she does a very good job, and for the win, I do have Patricia Arquette, because it's such a showy performance, it's a very transformative performance, she's playing a real-life person, and I think if you watch the show, she's almost undeniable because I was team Amy Adams up to the SAG Awards and then I watched Escape at Danamora and she really stole the show. And then I guess we have to, I still have Sarah Paulson in probably just- I do too. I, I, because she's an Emmy favorite and probably because I want her to get in, but I do think that with Connie Britton in the mix and with Juliana Margulies in the mix, it could be very difficult for her. But, you know, she's been nominated how many times? Eight? Somewhere around there. So, yeah. yeah. I think they might just check her off. Dirty John. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, uh, can we isolate that for production? <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. I, love that. I just wanted to get nominated for so many things so I could hear it on Emmy nomination morning. And yeah, Jim Sparks, Dirty John. <laughs> I 
do fear for Patricia Arquette that she might, if she gets both nominations, and I think she will, that she may split the vote with herself, where some people say I'm going to vote for her in lead, other people say they're going to vote for her in supporting, and that's why I think Patricia Clarkson is the front runner at the moment. Not a lot of people, I mean, people liked her performance, but I know a lot of people that didn't like her performance, and it's very, again, it's very quiet. In great. Kind of, yeah, and it's kind of funny because she's playing almost the same role like Patricia Arquette. And Patricia Arquette, is, it's this big performance. I mean, if you just watch the fourth episode that came out today, that could be her submission. She's, you know, screaming, she's crying. But what Riley mentioned before is that she's not this winking devil type of character. She's truly terrifying because she is based on, she is based on a real life, her character is based on a real life person and it's such a horrific story. I don't know if that could work against her. Well, again, it's going to depend on like how much they actually uh, remember and embrace sharp objects. Is it going to be like the night of, which kind of I think overperformed beyond people's expectations with all the acting and and writing and directing nominations, or is it going to be like Show Me a Hero from the same exact network where uh, you know it has all this great buzz and early precursor yeah. uh, uh, wins and nominations, and then just kind of dies because other things take its place. Yeah, it got a lot of nominations at the guilds, but it didn't really win any of them, whereas Escape to Anamora came out very late, so I don't think it had been seen when they were voting on nominations, but it ended up winning the majority of the nominations that it did get. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah I wonder um, if Sharp Objects, like you said, will be forgotten even more. Uh, it did very similarly to Maniac, which at this point I'm only predicting for Emma Stone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, depends on how much. Again, you know, we we've seen like really surprising acting nominees um, from these limited series if they really really like the shows. I mean, just on down the line, people like uh, Bokeen from uh, Fargo. Oh, Bokeen would buy. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, oh God, Bill Camp and Michael Kenneth Williams from uh, The mm -hmm. Night of. Um, so it's like there's always. It, it, it's so dependent on how much they actually respond to these shows and, and how much they actually just name check the people who are in them. And if they and respond also, to... even if they hate the show, they might yeah. give John Leguizamo a nomination. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, any final thoughts on the limited and movie categories this, this year uh, before we have seen very many of them? All the most the nominees that we predicted now, our, nomination, our predictions are going to look very different come June because there's so much premiering still, and I think we'll be in for quite a few surprises. And if there's really one show that I could put a, a FYC ban for is The Haunting of Hill House. And I just hope that Netflix pushes the show because if they do, they might be able to get it in a few categories. Uh, April and May are becoming, for Emmy season, what November and December are becoming, are, have been for, for the Oscars. Um, there's just way too many uh, moving pieces right now to be sure of anything that we're kind of just going on momentum and there's still a lot of things that are going to shift that momentum between now and then. Dirty John. 